Good morning, friends. We're going to use the information on this slide to help us as we complete the flipbook slides and charts for the three branches of government. As you go through this book, you'll want to put it in presentation mode. And when you do that, you can click on any one of the tabs, just like in our vocabulary book, and it will take you to the specific slide. So here's the executive branch. It says White House, President of the United States, Vice President of the United States, the Cabinet, research to find the current names or information for each of the members. Add that information to the boxes below. So I'm going to exit out of here and I'm going to say current U.S. Government Administration. So I can see right here on whitehouse.gov, it actually shows President Joe Biden and Kamala Harris. So I can go in immediately, if you didn't already know that, and you can type in President, and please put a label, it's either Mr. or President Joe Biden. And then we have Vice President Kamala. I'm going to go back and make sure I have that spelling right in just a second. I don't think there's an H, but I want to just double check. Nope, no H. So out of respect for the people in these positions, we want to make sure that we have all the information. And then the cabinet. So we're going to go right here to the cabinet. And it says... Vice President Joe Biden's cabinet includes Vice President Kamala Harris and the heads of 15 executive departments. So um, even though we don't want to plagiarize, what we're going to do is we're going to come back over here and say the cabinet includes Kamala, Vice President, sorry, Vice President Kamala Harris, as well as the leaders of 15, how did they say it, executive departments. They're also called committees or, you know, that kind of stuff. So I would just say um, 15 executive committees including the Secretary of Agriculture and else. The Secretary's Uh, state and transportation, I think, was one of them. Again, not plagiarizing. I am taking the information and putting it into my own words. Okay, so let's look at the next slide. What does the next slide ask us? What are the five main duties of the executive branch? Let's look at this right here. What are the five main, five main duties of the executive branch? So they can approve or veto laws make treaties with foreign governments, nominate judges to the Supreme Court, appoint cabinet members, and this is the commander of chief of our U.S. military forces. So we're going to say lead military. And let's see, what was veto, approve or veto laws. over here and it says nominate judges to the Supreme Court. Nominate Supreme Court. And I like the word justices, but it still means judges. That's number four. Let's look. Um, appoint cabinet members. So let's put um, 
tonight the heads of the executive committees, just the cabinet, and then for the fifth one, what did we miss? Oh, make treaties with foreign governments. Establish agreements, compromises with foreign, uh, let's see, with other foreign governments. So I am showing in here that this is the original language, but I, I put it in my own words. So establish agreements and compromises, those are treaties, with other, which is foreign governments. Again, we want to be careful to make sure that when we are completing our assignments that we are not plagiarizing. We are putting things in our own words and that too is important because that helps us internalize what we're learning. So please make sure that you are putting things in your own words. So it says the executive branch, the executive branch checks on these branches of government. So let's look back up here and see checks and balances. They have checks on the legislative and judicial branch, and they're checked on by the legislative less legislative and judicial branch. So that's going to be really easy. There's not really anything you can plagiarize here. That's, that's just what they're called. Legislative branch. Judicial branch. You kind of have to think of the government like gears in a car motor. They all work together to achieve a purpose. And so they all have these pieces that fit together to help them function to the best of their ability. The checks and balances are part of those um, gears that help them function. Sorry, I can't type and talk at the same time, apparently. All right, so now we're moving on to the legislative branch. This is the lawmaking body of our government. And so let's look and see. It says United States Congress, total number of members in Congress, number of representatives, and number of senators. So it says research to find the information for each of the members. Add that information to the boxes below. So let's look at Texas um, officials. Oh, let's do this. Total number of members of Congress. Oh, look, that information is right here. Let's look at our source and make sure that it's a credible source, though. Okay, he's a congressman, and he's just sharing out information about the, um, the government. Very good. I wonder if we can go ahead and find... Let's see. Let's go members of Congress. Part of the reason check on the um, last one that we were on is because it was the White House and so I know that I'm familiar with that website and I know that it's as far as facts like that it's um, pretty reliable and I'm looking at this and it doesn't look like I have the information that I need on there so that's interesting and then let's see here we go looks like the exact same information. So we're going to come down here. Oh, look, they're talking about they're talking about who's who. So 435 congressional districts. Let's see. Senate, the House of Representatives. Schoolhouse Rock Songs. Let's go back up here and do Legislators. Okay. Interesting. 
it had the information in the explanation of the website, but I don't see it readily available on this website. Let's go here. Okay, this is the website we've already used. currently 435 voting members of the House of Representatives. So we can go back here. What did it say here? What does a congressman do? 535 total members of Congress. Okay, so there's 535 total members of Congress. Uh, the Senate has 100 members. And the House of Representatives has 435. So I had to do a little math just to make sure that um, this one says that there's 435 voting members of the House of Representatives. This one talks about how there's 435 members of the House of Representatives and it's got the 535 and 100. So I think this is probably, they're both a reliable source because the data is matching. So then we're gonna come down here and say, okay, the seven main duties of the le legislative branch are, all right, well, let's go back up here and see what the seven main duties of the legislative branch are. So looking here, oh, look, there's the uh, information right here. We could have used that. Proposed tax laws impeach the president. So let's go down here and do impose tax laws impeach president. We saw that being actively used this last presidency. Um, approve presidential appointments and ratify treaties. Declare war. So I'm going to do declare war and override a presidential veto. So let's do declare war. override the president if he says no. And that's overriding the veto. And they have to have two-thirds vote in the Congress. Two-thirds vote. Let's see what else is in there. It did say approve presidential appointments. So um, they get to tell the president yes or no on who he appoints to court, Supreme Court. We'll just put um, leadership. And then it said ratify treaties. So ratify means that they can agree with the president and sign it into action. So sign into action agreements made with other governments. So that's, again, you can see some of these responsibilities overlay for our checks and our balances. So we did propose tax laws, impeach the president, approve presidential appointments, ratify treaties, can declare war, propose amendments to the Constitution. Now, it doesn't mean that they can amend the Constitution. They can propose amendments to the Constitution. That means they can suggest changes to add to the Constitution. All right. Legislative branch checks on these branches of government, and these branches of government check on the legislative branch. I have a feeling that it's going to be executive and judicial. <gasps> Look, 
executive and judicial, and then it's checked on by, you got it, executive and judicial. So we're going to come down here, click on here, executive. and judicial branches. Now, keep in mind, I may be going very fast, but you are able to pause this at any time. You can go back and listen to it again, or you can pause it so that you can add information into your um, assignment. Executive branch and judicial All right, speaking of judicial branch, it says total number of members of Supreme Court justices. And then there are other federal courts. There's courts of appeals and all kinds of cool stuff. So let's go up here and look at nine justices nominated by the president and approved by the Senate. Okay, so we have to come down here. And this goes back to that checks and balances. So nine justices. They are appointed they are appointed or chosen by the president and approved by the Senate. That's smaller so it'll fit in the box. And then there are other federal courts. What are the four main duties of the judicial branch? So let's see. Their jobs are to declare laws unconstitutional, settle disputes involving the U.S., settle disputes between the states, and preside over the impeachment trial of presidents. president. So they make sure laws follow our federal government outlined in the Constitution. They the Chief Justice, that's like the person who's in charge of everybody, um, is the judge during an, uh, a presidential impeachment trial. What else did it say? Settle disputes between states. So, so they hear cases about the U.S. and they hear cases between the states. So. hear and make decisions about all cases regarding the U.S. Okay. And hear and decide cases when states disagree. All right. We got that. I bet I can guess what this one is. So I'm going to go ahead and type it in here and then I'll double check myself. Executive branch has checks and balances on it and the judicial branch and, oh, no, not judicial. Sorry, legislative. Let me go back. Legislative branch. And over here, it's going to be the same thing. It checks up on Okay, I had that backwards, but you get what I mean. It checks up on the executive branch and the judicial branch, and then both of those branches check up on it. Legislative, sorry. Sometimes my mouth gets ahead of my brain. All right, so it says, read each box of duties for each branch of government. Decide which branch of government those duties are, are checking on. Drag and drop the correct box from the margins on top of the duties listed below. Executive branch, they can propose laws, veto laws, call special sessions of Congress, and make appointments. I'm going to say that those are checks on the legislative branch, and the reason for that is because 
the legislative branch is where laws are formed, where they are amended, and where they are voted on. So I'm going to slide that right on over there. To grant pardons to federal law offenders, appoint federal judges. Okay, anything that deals with the law and judges is going to be the judicial branch. So the legislative branch can declare executive actions to be unconstitutional. That word executive tells me it's going to be a check on the executive branch. Can declare acts of Congress to be unconstitutional. Hmm. Acts of Congress. Congress in the, is in the legislature. Let me come back to that one. Can override a president's veto, declare war. Wait a second. Some of these things are out of order. I'm not sure I'm following the directions, right? Let me go back. Read each box of duties. Decide which branch of government those duties are checking on. Drag and drop. This is, they've got these two mixed up. So let me do, this. Overriding a president's veto, declaring war, and impeaching a president. Okay, this is a check on the executive branch, but it should be under legislative. So we're going to actually skip over this slide. In fact, I'm going to delete it because I think it's worthless now. All right, my U.S. government job application. If you could apply for a job in one of the three branches of government, what would it be? Fill out this practice application for that job. All right, well, Let's do that. Put your name. My name is Mrs. Cito. Put your birth date. Eight. I'll put it in there. August 11th, 19 something something. We'll leave it like that. State you live in is Texas. The branch of government I think I would like to work for would be the judicial branch. Specific job you are seeking within this branch of government. I want to be a Supreme Court Justice. So, three duties that I would have as part of this job. So if I go back up here, I can look at what are their jobs. So I'm going to say one of my main jobs is going to be to make sure that all laws follow our Constitution. Another thing would be make decisions about cases regarding the U.S. And help settle disputes between states. Okay, so things that make me qualified to do this job. I love to learn. So learning about all of learning all of the ins and outs of the Constitution. Constitution is appealing to me. I have a strong sense of right and wrong. And I like making sure that justice prevails. That means justice wins. Okay. My professional goal for the next five years, well, to be um, a Supreme Court justice, you have to have been a lawyer at some point. So I'm going to have to get my law degree through Texas Tech, I think, because they have a great pre-law program, and then work in criminal and civil courts in Texas for a while. Usually Supreme Court, court justices have been judges in other places. Why should I be hired for this job? Well, I should be hired for this, for this job because you can count on me to research information and make decisions based on the facts 
of the Constitution. And the cases presented. I am a good listener and I hold on to or retain information that I hear. Okay. So that's why I think I should be. All right, this letter of interest. After you've completed your job application, write a letter of interest for the job you would want. In the letter, explain why you are the best person for the job and what you would like to accomplish. Use complete sentences and correct spelling and grammar. So I'm going to tell you on this one, you don't have to do this one. You don't have to do this. But you can if you would like. And um, if you do, if you do write the letter, let me, let me put this little disclaimer in there. If you do, your name will go into a drawing for a wait for it, $5 gift card to Subway or Starbucks. All right, so if you do this and you do it well and you follow the directions about what you're supposed to do, then you can earn a gift card to Subway. So what you're going to do is you're going to write a letter, dear Mr. President, because that's who I would be writing to um, if I wanted a job in the Supreme Court. And then I would tell all of the reasons that I would be a good Supreme Court justice. I may have to go up here and say, what are the qualifications of a Supreme Court justice? And I may have to do a little bit of research to find out what it would need. Oh, all justices have been trained in the law. A justice does not have to be a lawyer or a law school graduate. Oh, I can go back and change that. Uh, let me see. So this is Supreme Court Gov. I can go here to find information about how they're selected and what the process is. And here is the information that I would look at. Okay. So that being said, this is what you're working on today. I hope that um, the information that I have shared with you is helpful and that you get this completed. You do need to go ahead and share this with me when, well, no, you don't, don't share it with me. I'm gonna take that back. Do not share this uh, with me. What you're gonna do instead is yesterday we talked about putting a link into, do not share this presentation with me. And even though I say that, some of you go ahead and share with me anyway, don't do that. It bogs down my Google Drive. Do not share this presentation with me or else. Haha, <laughs> just kidding. Um, instead, remember to add it to the link page, the link slide in your journal, and create a reflection page. So we're going to go in here to our journals. And let me find mine really quick. I'm running out of time to do this, so I'm hoping that I can get this done and downloaded for you. If I go here, I'm going to go into whichever journal belongs to your grade level. So I'm going to go with eighth grade because that's who I'm working with first this morning. And I'm going to find my journal. And I'm going to come down. For all of you, this is going to be part of your Unit 2. So we're going to come down to Unit 2 right below that little, that's the learning targets. So we're going to come in here and do add a slide, not zoom, add a slide. And then we're going to call this slide. No, I don't want, I don't want that. Go back. And then give me my cursor back. All right. I'm going to put links to work from Freedom Week. So in here, you'll put your link to the vocabulary page that you did, and you're going to put a link to this presentation. So I'm going to hit copy link. 
I'm going to move over here and I'm going to go to insert. Where are you? Okay, I'm going to come down here. It's not behaving, guys. Let's see. I'm going to click off of it and click back on it. Yes, my cursor. Text buttons. Let's just do that. All right. So I'm going to put in here the three branches of government. Again, even though this is not directly assessed this week, you will be held accountable for this information at a later date when we um, are really going over this in class. So just know that this is kind of your pre-teach time for minutes that are coming up and things that you will need to know. So I'm going to put my vocabulary link in there at a later time. I'm going to come up here and I'm going to make a copy, duplicate this slide, drag it on down. And you guys know me, I'm going to make a couple of copies of this so I don't have to keep going back up. Duplicate slide, duplicate slide, duplicate slide. I'm going to want to take two of those, this one right here and this one right here. And the first one is going to be daily journal entry vocabulary. And then the next one is going to be daily journal entry, three branches. You'll go ahead and fill out your reflection for the date, the learning target, and the reflection. So our learning target is going to be, I can use social studies vocabulary to explain representative to government. Okay? Then you're going to put your reflection. This one is I can write or speak about the three branches of government and how they relate to republicanism through checks and balances and elections and well, how they relate to uh, how they relate to checks and balances. Okay. Once you're finished with doing your reflection, again, you have to put in the date, you have to do your reflection that's for you. Once you are finished with that, if I have met with you, um, then you are free to leave, but don't leave class before you are finished with these assignments. Thank you, and I will see you soon.